20 days is not much time and if you don't have a business model if you don't have your financial projections if you don't know what your plan is for scalability if you don't know how you're going to measure your impact yet if you don't have a business model or a marketing plan you're going to lose this opportunity as a team we sat down and we sensed the urgency of the situation. We're going to San Francisco in 20 days and these entrepreneurs are not prepared. We have not set them up for success. In 20 days we have the biggest opportunity of our entire lives. It's time I think that we set this up and that we encourage each other as a community to be striving for that. We're the luckiest people out there that these folks at San Francisco, that good capital and the hub and SoCap, believe in us enough that they're willing to host this event. They've never done anything like this for a new organization ever. But over the next 20 days and over the next five weeks, it's gonna take a hell of a lot of determination and preparation. And I cannot emphasize that more. 25 brilliant entrepreneurs working on ventures in 17 countries and hailing from six continents will convene this summer in Boulder. Living under the same roof and sharing the same meals for 10 weeks, they have convened in Boulder this summer for one reason, to create ventures that future generations will remember as having changed the world. Ventures that will effectively address a social or environmental need, that are financially self-sustaining, and that will ultimately scale to meet the needs of at least one million people. It's no big deal. So Nameka is on his way, which is why we're all up so late. Some of us were planning on going to bed, but we want to greet Nameka, and we wanted to make him, holy shit, cookies. I remember that I'm coming like uh, three weeks late. So already I know I've missed a lot. A lot of people singing and they came out from the kitchen and they suddenly owned the light and they owned the light and I saw so many people. Wow, you guys are not sleeping. <laughs> that was the first uh, impression. And first impressions matters. been here for five weeks I have to sadly switch places with the other half of the Who Gives a Crap team. And when the Institute said that it was possible to switch out teammates it worked out really well. All right, let me go, I'm off. When, when you try and explain the Unreasonable Institute to people you can't really capture one of the most important aspects of it and that is that you're living with people that are really from around the world. When you're doing social enterprise that's the kind of perspective you need. You know, you have lunch with somebody from Pakistan, and then you, you, go, you go and chat with somebody from France, and then you have someone from Nigeria to, to bounce ideas off. My name is Nemeka Ikeguono, and my project is the Smallholders Farmers Rural Radio. The Smallholders Farmers Rural Radio is a radio station that broadcasts agricultural, environmental, and market information that is timely, relevant, and well adapted to over 250,000 listeners who are small farmers. We'll uh, be able to enable small farmers to boost their agricultural productivity and in the long term also increase their household income. This one in front of me right here is um, looking very healthy. I can see it's very green and the leaves are quite broad. If we, if we note the way the average Nigerian farmer accepts to grow cassava because there is a new market, then you realize um, the importance of cassava, not just as a food crop, but as a major cash earning crop. Nigeria is a big country, and uh, the big country should also have uh, big problems and big solutions too. This is my country, it's my community, my people, same language. If I don't give back to my community, I wonder who I will give back to. You're listening to Colorado Matters. I'm Ryan Warner, and we're talking with the, the president of the Unreasonable Institute in Boulder. That's Daniel Epstein. And Daniel, I, I have to ask first why the Unreasonable Institute before I ask you what it does. Tell me about that name. Um, it outlines what we're looking for. We're looking for young entrepreneurs and innovators who who don't believe that our current solutions to these issues that we face today 
on an international and a local level are sufficient and who are trying to discover new means, new market-based solutions that will effectively address these issues. I know you haven't really seen Boulder yet, so we I've put not, it. I've not seen Boulder. This, where we're going, is my favorite place. It's the best tea in Boulder and a beautiful place to uh, have a conversation. There are over 90 million smallholder farmers in Nigeria. 19 or 90? 90. 90. Nine, zero. <laughs> a country of 150 million people. I think one of our challenges is uh, the political situation. Because the moment we start talking about politics, that is when we have problems. Yeah. The main thing is that because I insist on non-political, non-religious and non-profit broadcasting, I make sure that every information coming out from the Smallholders Foundation benefits small farmers. Well, what, are, what are the other challenges though? Is that, is that it? I mean, $250,000? No, $270,000. $270,000. Get you the transmitter you need to be able to broadcast to potentially yeah. 50,000 villages. Yeah. Um, which is 20 million. <laughs> 20 million people. The goal of the project is to make the tower bigger. We have a 100 feet tower at the moment. We are going to make it 800 feet. We have a 50 watt transmitter. We want a 20 kilowatt transmitter. So San Francisco, what, uh, what are you most excited about going to San Francisco? Oh. Okay. Having fun in the bus with the whole fellows, sing, yes, yes. song, sleep, eat, you know. <laughs> and, the, and have an opportunity to get serious yeah. and pitch your idea to investors. Yeah. Wow, that's an amazing opportunity. Does it come every day? No. No, <laughs> <laughs> no I'm really excited. Yeah. Let it come. I already have a business plan, but I want to make sure that uh, it incorporates one or two new ideas that will be beneficial to the listeners at the pitch fest that we are going for in San Francisco. I've benefited from the fellows through the cross-fertilization of ideas on what works and uh, what does not work. But I, I guess the greatest asset is the friendship that we will definitely maintain long after the Unreasonable Institute many, many years to come. Ben! No! Great to meet you. Oh, God! No! Thank you so much, guys. Jayhan was going to be here for the probably more enjoyable part of the 10-week process, the getting to know people, uh, doing all of the team building stuff, and I was essentially flying in to get slammed for the next five weeks and, uh, and try and, you know, make our venture really happen. <laughs> my brother! And my friend. <laughs> See you later. See you guys. Thank you so much. Best of luck in San Francisco and everything. We're going into San Francisco looking for a tiny little bit more knowledge than what we've got before we open up our first round of investment and, and hopefully get this venture off the ground. I mean, 22 entrepreneurs are pitching to one room and 22 pitches is a lot to sit through. And if yours isn't outstanding, if it isn't world class, if it isn't riveting, and if it isn't fully convincing, I don't think you're going to be able to really seize that opportunity. probably worked out well because it's it's played to both of our strengths a little bit but at the same time I'm um, secretly gonna kill him when I get home <laughs> basically we're using Fernando's computer to talk to my computer to make the penguin talk what is the penguin gonna say <laughs> 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 